Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope you're all having a wonderful and lovely day today. And with that being said, I would like to welcome everyone back to my new and updated Pokemon Unite Blue Sack Setup Guide. Now, guys, <laughs> thankfully, Blue Sacks have finally answered our prayers, and they've added a brand new version of Blue Sacks 5 that completely remedies all of the issues I spoke about in my previous video, which is now outdated. Additionally, you can no longer download BlueSax 4, at least it doesn't appear that you can. Instead, now we have these two buttons here, Play on Cloud and Download BlueSax. So guys, getting started, of course we're going to come over here to the BlueSax official website, bluesax.com, and we're going to click on the green button that says Download BlueSax. Now guys, once y'all do that, we're going to come over here to BlueSax, and you'll see you will now have BlueSax version 5.3 point whatever. Once you're inside here, click on the Google Play Store. Now guys, if this is your first time opening the Google Play Store on this version of BlueSax, you will probably have to sign in using your Google account. This is okay, this is basically the same account that you use for your mobile device, and this is so that way you can download all the games. So come over here to search for apps and games, and we're going to type in Pokemon Unite. As you can see, I already have it here. It pops up. Click on that. You will see Pokemon Unite, and there will be a download button right here for you. So now, guys, go ahead and download that. And once you accomplish that step, we can safely close the Google Play Store for the rest of this tutorial. And now, before we launch the actual game, we're going to tinker with some settings to give you guys the most optimal performance in your games. So come over here to the top right where it says Menu. Click on Settings. And the first tab we have here, Performance, we're going to look at CPU allocation. Now guys, all this does is it will force your CPU to allocate more cores. Now, if you do not have a very strong CPU, or if you have a very old computer, I highly, highly recommend that you leave this at four cores, so that way it does not tax your CPU completely. For me personally, guys, I have a very expensive computer. I'm currently running an i9 uh, 10900K, so I like to just put this at six cores for maximum performance. Memory allocation, guys, what this does is this essentially asks you how much RAM you would like to allocate towards BlueStacks in general. So while BlueStacks is running, this will use a total of 4 gigs of RAM, which I think is pretty standard for most people. Um, you used to be able to change this to a higher number, but as you can see, if I go try to change it to anything higher than um, 4 gigs, it will say supported RAM range is only limited to 4096 megabytes, which of course is also 4 gigs of RAM. So for the purpose of this video, we're just going to go ahead and leave that at 4 gigs. For performance mode, we're going to leave this on high performance. This just makes it again so it is the most optimal. It feels nice and smooth and buttery. There's no choppiness, none, none of that garbage that we have to worry about. Now, this part is a little bit controversial, but I'll go over it as quickly as possible. The frame rate... I've messed with it going past 60. To be honest with you guys, I don't really notice that much of a difference. Um, you can enable high frame rate if you want. If you have a really nice computer, you know, set this all the way to 240, you know, get your frames above 60. But again, it just feels like it runs a little bit more smoothly and a little bit more buttery with the cap 60 FPS just for this game. V-Sync we're going to leave disabled. And alternatively, you have the option of disabling FPS during gameplay. Or I'm sorry, not disabling, displaying FPS during gameplay. I like this just so I can see a more stable FPS counter on the bottom left. Now guys, for the next category, we have display settings. I'm on a 1440 monitor, so I like to put this to 2560 by 1440. You can also put it on 1080. It doesn't really matter. If you want to downscale a little bit more, you can also put it on 1600 by 900. All perfectly fine options. The pixel density essentially determines how pretty the game is going to look. Basically speaking, the more pixels, the better the image quality. I like to leave this at 240 DPI, just simply so that my game can have the most performance and it's not choppy. It's not going to look the absolute tippy top best, but it will run the best. And that's really all that matters because this is a competitive game. Now moving on to the next tab, we have graphics. Now in graphics, guys, we definitely want to set this to performance. Again, we want maximum performance and optimization. This is going to allow us to do that. The graphics renderer, I've spoken to a lot of people, and I've also tested it myself. It just appears that DirectX is a better graphics renderer than OpenGL. 
Again, this might be different for you guys. Everybody has different hardware, but in my experience, DirectX has yielded better results. Interface renderer, you may leave this on auto. ASTC textures, to my understanding, if you have hardware decoding, if your computer will allow you to do this, unfortunately mine does not, hardware decoding is better in terms of performance. This will allocate more of your GPU towards rendering certain uh, textures, and so this will allow your game to run more smoothly. Again, I don't have this available for some strange reason, so we'll just go ahead and put on software. No problem there. Audio, that is complete preference. <laughs> that's up to you guys. Uh, gamepad, again, that's up to you guys. We're not going to be going over controller in this video specifically. Preferences, eh. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can have it so escape exits your full screen, unlock your mouse cursor so it goes outside of the blue stacks window. Doesn't really matter too much. Now, device settings, guys. Apparently, I've spoken to some moderators on this topic. Apparently, OnePlus 5 and OnePlus 3T are the most stable versions. Now, for all of my testing and for all of my gameplay on this, I've only used OnePlus 5. So we're going to go ahead and set that to OnePlus 5. Network provider doesn't really seem to matter all that much, so we can go ahead and leave that. Here you can change your shortcuts. Again, total preference. And advanced, we're not going to mess with anything in there. So guys, once you have all these performance settings to your liking, we're going to go ahead and close this. And we are now going to launch Pokemon Unite. And now guys, as you can see, as soon as you launch Pokemon Unite, uh, Blue Stacks have done us the favor of offering their own control scheme. And this time, it is actually quite good. Surprisingly, right? Yeah, I know. Now, there is kind of a lot of bloat on the screen here, and we're definitely going to be deleting some of this as soon as we get in-game. Um, because as you can see, we have a whole bunch of numbers, we have a whole bunch of keybinds. We don't really need all of that. We do need most of it, though. So, once again, guys, once we get into game right here, we're just going to go ahead and load her up. And immediately, just like the last video, we're going to jump right into practice mode, guys, because that's where we're going to configure all of our settings. So go ahead to the top left, click your profile icon, click on practice, and go to practice area. Again, I like Mr. Mime. He's funny. He does a lot of damage, right? So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and choose this guy. Again, it doesn't matter who you choose, guys. Does not matter a singular bit. Choose your character, choose a CPU opponent, and let's hit that start button, baby. Alright, should only take a second to load. And once again, guys, just like last video, once we get into the game itself, we're going to go to the top left corner right up here. And there's going to be a little wrench icon. We're going to click on that. We're going to remove our cooldowns. We're going to disable the attacks for the opposing Pokemon. Disable wild Pokemon. And we're going to give ourselves a bunch of levels. Now, guys, there's a few things I want you to note about this really quickly. Once you get into game right here, you can see that I have a little keybind that says F. And if I hit that F button, it's going to level up that ability. But what's that, you say? It looks like F is also the item button. And it looks like there's also a level up keybind right here, Control W, but it's not quite on the, on the ability that you want to level up. Now, this is kind of silly, so what we're going to do is we're going to tweak a couple things to make this easier for you guys for the long run. So, we're going to go ahead and level these abilities real quick. Level our ultimate, and we're going to go to the right over here where it says Game Controls. Click on Open Advanced Editor, and voila, guys, now we have the Blue Stacks MOBA setup, which honestly ain't half bad. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and as you can see, there are two kind of D-pads overlapping. We're going to click on one right here, which is the normal D-pad, and we're going to be deleting this. So just go ahead right there and click on the X. We don't need that because we're going to be right-clicking primarily. Now, again, guys, they already have a lot of buttons set up. I'm just going to try and go through as quickly as possible, and you can determine what keybinds you want for what abilities, where you want them, all that good stuff. So for me, map button, I prefer caps lock. I don't know why there's an additional end button right here. We can go ahead and delete that. Uh, this new button that they have right here, which is set to V, this allows you to free look in-game, guys. So... Before I move on really quickly, I want to show you what this does. So let's say I'm moving around, I'm clicking around and whatnot, and I hold V, you can now just look around the map. It's uh, it's quite nice. So I'm just holding V, doing all this. Of course, you can see I'm moving around. Pretty cool setting. So again, you can change that to whatever button you like. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go back into the buttons right here. 
Um, I do not like shift as my scoring button, so we're going to do G for goal. That's pretty, that's pretty neat, right? Um, we're going to delete this one. We're going to delete this two. And we're also going to delete this one. And we're also going to delete this two. So now after we do that, guys, you're going to see that they already have our MOBA skill key mind set up. So we're going to move the queue a little bit up right here. It's kind of off screen, so you can't really see this vital settings button unless you move it. So go ahead and move it a little bit. Click on settings. And now, guys, they've also done us the favor of setting everything to quick cast by default, which is great because that's what you should be using for most of the abilities anyhow. But we want to uncheck stop movement from here from all these abilities because we don't want to stop moving. We want to be able to cast these abilities while we're moving. So do that for your second ability. Uncheck stop movement. Do that for your ultimate ability. A little hard to find the settings on this one because they're overlapping. Uncheck stop movement. And again, I'm going to change the button for that because I don't like E. Again, guys, key binds don't matter. It's totally up to you. I'm not going to go over the key bindings in their entirety. Once we have that, guys, we're going to come over here to the MOBA D-pad and we're going to click on the settings button right here. Now, for the hero speed, I like to set this to 30. What this means is essentially when you are clicking around with right click, it just makes it much, much snappier. So as you can see, if I click right here, Mr. Mime is going to stop moving right there. Now, this wasn't the case with the last blue stacks, and it was totally, totally buggy. You would you would click right here, you would keep moving. Really ridiculous and really annoying. But ever since these new fixes and the new patch, this isn't a problem, guys. So once you go ahead and set that hero speed to 30, go back into the events editor. They also have the hero dummy automatically set up. Now, guys, you can just leave this right where it is. I've had no problems with this predetermined placement. You can go into settings, hero speed, make sure it's on 30 and you should be good to go. This just centers the hero dummy so that way it knows where you're right clicking so nothing is offset. All right, guys. Now, once we have the hero speed set to 30 on the MOBA D-pad and hero dummy, and we've taken off stop movement from each ability, what we can also do is we'll come over back into the settings and we'll go into more settings. And you can do this for any ability that you would like. The cancel ability feature is by default set to T. Again, I personally like using my side mouse button to cancel it. So we can just go ahead and click on the little cancel box and then you can hit whatever button you'd like to cancel your ability. Once that is done, you may hit close. Make sure you hit save to save your changes and everything is good to go. Now guys, there's really not a whole lot to go over in this video because again, most of everything is already pre-set up. As you can see, we have Control W, Control E, and Control Q here. These buttons are simply used to level up your abilities because guys, if you do not level up your abilities by clicking on them, you will need a keybind. So let's see if I can give you an example. So you see this ability pops up and I can hit F. Now this is kind of strange because F again is also your item button. So if an ability pops up and it's in this in this uh, area right here, you can just hit F and it will not use your item. Now I'm gonna hit F again just so you can see that it will actually use it right there. So you see a little noise. Of course it didn't go through because I have the cooldowns on. But if you wanna level up an ability in that slot, you can hit F. So when you guys are doing this, and you see your abilities pop up, you want to make sure that you add these level up keybinds to where the abilities are going to pop up on your screen. This makes it so that way if you get a new ability, and again, let's see if I can get a new ability, you don't have to just click on this. So you can see how the ability is upwards out here and the control W is here. What I would do is I would go into game controls, advance editor, and simply just click and drag that there. And I'm going to set that to alt W because I don't really like control, I'm going to be honest. And now I can just hit Alt W and boom, I now have my upgraded barrier. And guys, honestly, that is pretty much it. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a demo just to show you that everything is working perfectly fine compared to the last video. So if I hold W and use my barrier, there is no longer the issue of your targeted ability not going to the edges. As you can see, I'm barely moving my mouse and it hits the edges quite easily. Not only that, Again, you can hold the right click while you move this around, guys. It's pretty disgusting. So if we come over here, I can just let go of W, press Q, and boom. Instant confusion. It is so easy, guys. It is so smooth. There are no problems. You want to use your ult, no problem. You just press R. There's no more issue of the text popping up. 
none of that, guys. It works perfectly smooth. It is perfectly buttery. Let's see if I can turn on wild Pokemon right here. Again, WQ. <laughs> it just goes like nothing. It's really, really easy, guys. Again, you want to score? No problem. Just walk up, hit G. Everything's good to go. You know, take a little bit of damage. Use your potion. Um, and guys, this all works perfectly fine while you're moving around. As you can see, you can do every single thing while you move around. So let's say that's an enemy right there. I'm moving. I can just click once and then let go of the ability right there. It's really, really easy, guys. It's really, really easy, really simple. And I hope that this guide will elevate your guys' gameplay in Blue Sacks. Again, for me personally, I still prefer the Nintendo Switch version just because I like the UI. I don't really like how the mobile UI is so messy. There's a bunch of things around here. Um, not really my cup of tea, but guys, this works perfectly good now. It is absolutely insane. As you can see, we have solid FPS. It's even going beyond the 60 FPS cap, <laughs> so I guess that doesn't matter. Um, there is no stuttering, guys. No lag issues. No input issues. Just none of that. It's perfectly good. So, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my video. I greatly appreciate it. You have no idea how much this means to me to be able to help you guys and make guide videos. So, again, if you all enjoyed this video, man, please leave a like. Please leave a comment. If you want to, even subscribe. Not necessary, but it would help out. And if you guys want to see any more Pokemon Unite related content, whether it be a guide, a gameplay series guide, I am currently a Masters Rank player. I play this game basically every other day for fun and competitively. So let me know what you guys want to see, and I will do my absolute best to deliver that content. Thank you so much, guys, and I hope you have a great damn day.